The 2012 International Building Code changed the way flooring is tested for slip resistance. Dynamic coefficient of friction testing is now required for ceramic tile using the BOT 3000E and test standard ANSI A137.1 for areas that may get wet in use. Previously, the ASTM C1028 test was used and we were looking for a .6 or greater using static COF testing. That test method has been withdrawn by the ASTM because this .6 number didn't ever mean much of anything in regards to actual slip resistance, and the ADA never actually recommended using this test method. The objective of testing for building owners and specifiers, of course, is to prevent accidents and financial losses on their property due to slips and falls. There are five ingredients that can lead to a slip injury. Feel free to hit pause to look at any of these slides more carefully. There are many areas that require wet slip resistance, such as bathroom floors, pool decks, kitchens, showers, bathtubs, and outdoor walkways. The present International Building Code requires that level indoor floors meet the DCOF of 0.42 or greater. But this only applies to flooring that is indoors and level. The ANSI standard goes on to say that there are several other factors that should be considered when choosing an appropriate flooring for a particular use, but they tell us nothing about how to consider these other factors. The Tile Council of North America, which created this test, goes on to add several more factors that should be considered, but again they do not specify what these other factors mean in regards to slip resistance and the DCOF number you should be looking for if these other factors are a part of your project. If you don't consider all these factors in your decision when choosing appropriate flooring, will you be found negligent in a slip and fall accident? Negligence is the key word in a lawsuit. The bottom line is that ANSI A137.1 sets a very low bar for safety. Getting a 0.42 on this test does not ensure safety at all. That's your job. Wet slip resistance requires either microscopic pores or suction cups in the surface, or sharp peaks on top of it. Sometimes you can find slip test data on tile boxes or from the manufacturer, but typically you will not find any reliable slip test data. The pendulum has been in use for decades in 49 nations for testing the slip resistance of flooring. The Australian standard, HB198, was passed in 2014 and it has specific values required for dozens of different flooring situations. A ramp leading up to a hotel, where people will be pulling suitcases, will require more friction than a bathtub, for instance. The pendulum has been found through extensive research to have a high correlation with German ramp testing, where a test subject walks on flooring wearing a harness and the angle of the ramp is increased as the subject walks up and down the ramp until the subject slips. The critical angle of the ramp is then recorded. The cost of testing flooring before it is installed is minimal compared to dealing with a slip and fall lawsuit. Tests on your floors through Safety Direct America can cost from $179 to $290 per sample depending on the test method you request. A standard pendulum test is $230, which includes a signed and stamped certified test report. Tests at your location are based on time and expenses. We've tested floors in every corner of the USA and beyond. Ideally, you would test potential flooring candidates before they are written into the plans. Then again, after installation, as construction cleanup can often affect slip resistance. And then again, just before turning over the building. Periodic testing afterwards can help in case of a fraudulent slip and fall claim, as it will prove that the floors have maintained their slip resistance over time, and that cleaning procedures have not affected the wet slip resistance negatively. Cleaning procedures in high traffic can wear down tiles that were once slip resistance, which is why McDonald's created the Sustainable Slip Resistance Test Procedure. The tile is tested with the pendulum, then given simulated wear, and then tested again. Many other companies and clients of ours are now using this test method to choose flooring. Not all floors need to be safe when wet. If you plan on keeping the floor dry, then the floor doesn't need to be anti-slip in wet conditions. Umbrella bags on rainy days by the entrance to a slippery when wet floor, the use of dust mops, adequate matting, and outdoor solid overhangs outside entrances can help keep a lobby or other area dry. But outdoor surfaces must always be slip resistant when wet. There is no U.S. standard or test method for determining whether a particular flooring is suitable for outdoor use. It's up to you to determine whether it's safe or not. The pendulum test is the most widely used and dependable test for helping you accomplish this. Testing your floors quarterly has been shown to reduce payouts for slips and falls up to 98% on large properties and can help protect you from fraudulent claims and scare away ambulance chasing lawyers looking for a quick easy payday. If you're testing your floors regularly, that will scare most lawyers off from the get-go. To recap, the 2012 International Building Code requires a minimum DCOF, 
but more friction may be necessary in many situations for safety. A pendulum test can give you more information on whether or not a particular tile is suitable for its intended use. For all kinds of floor slip resistance testing, contact us here at safetydirectamerica.com and have a safe day.